Hi, welcome to Sips Wood Chips. I'm Sip Mendes, and I want to thank everybody for watching uh, the videos. It's been going pretty good. I've been doing this since uh, August, and um, it's gone well. I've got uh, about 15 videos out there now, and um, I've been turning a lot of mesquite bowls and uh, other objects, and it's really dulled my tools. So I went to sharpen my uh, bowl gouge, and I can't find my jig. Here's a um, here's what it looks like. This came with my uh, Thompson's um, detail gouge, and so I've been looking for this uh, jig and I can't find it. So I decided I'm going to build a uh, Captain Eddie style jig. So here's the the jig I built, and it's a piece of five sixteenths rod with a one inch square. The the uh, chisel sits inside the the one inch square piece of metal. I welded a, a 5 16 square nut on the top and a bolt through that and I tapered it down like uh, Captain Eddie showed and uh, I want to show you how I built this jig. Before you start any woodworking project make sure you read, understand and follow all instructions that came with your tools. It's important to work safely. These uh, videos are for entertainment purposes and uh, the methods I use may not be the best nor the safest. It's important to work safely. Maintain a safe working environment. Always wear goggles, uh, dust masks, and um, uh, ear protection. So the trick on making this is it has to hold your chisel right down the center. This bolt will be in the channel, in the V-groove, in the top of the chisel. And this peg here will steady it in the, in the steady rest, the tool rest. The first thing I'm going to do is mark my square stock here at the 2 inch mark. And I'm going to follow that line around. the edges and remove the burrs from this little part that I made. My tool is going to extend from it about two inches and it's going to sit in the V part of the square. So I'm going to have to um, drill a hole in the top of this so that it passes down and into this, this uh, groove here. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that and I'm going to cut I'm going to be back about three quarters of an inch. And this is just rough, three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to make a, um, a hole where I can attach a nut. I happen to have a square nut, a 516 square nut, and that's what I want to use. So I'm going to mark here about a half an inch back. I'm going to mark the front and back and then I'm going to cut down into it enough so that I can uh, make a notch that the 
nut will fit into. What I really would like to do is cut across this and just lift that piece up, but I don't think I can. Now that I've got it ground there, I can cut it a little bit easier. Take a file and kind of flatten that in a little bit. What I want is for this to set right in there like that. Then I can weld on the sides there. Uh, I hope you can see that I ground this off so it's shiny now here and on the other side and also on the back this is where the, the leg is going to be attached so you need to grind and clean it off really good so that um, the melted steel will uh, stick to it better so here are, here's my piece of metal that I'm going to weld my uh, square and then here is the, the nut it's got the bolts through it to help it keep it aligned and I have it clamped with my ground clamp. I don't want uh, the uh, flare from the, the MIG welder to go into the camera, so I'll put a big magnet here to kind of block that a little bit. Maybe I'll put another one over there to block it a little bit. I've got my welding uh, helmet on. I'm going to start up my welder. And I'm welding with uh, argon CO2 gas. Here's the plan I'm working from. This is a uh, photocopy of what the uh, one-way Wolverine uh, jig looks like. And I have to make this leg here. So I'm going to just uh, place my rod as it would appear on here because my rod is actually going to come up like about right about uh, I'll place it on here, and my rod is going to come up about like that. Okay, so I'm going to cut it right about here. Okay, and uh, I have my rod in the vise, and I have my hacksaw here. 
and so I'll just cut it right there. step over to the grinder and grind that off and I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up also and um, take off the oxidation of where I'm gonna weld this rod was bent from, where, from the last time I uh, saw the piece off and I'm gonna bend this over a little bit more because I want it to match the drawing the, a little bit better I want it to meet like this. After I weld it, I'll make any final adjustments. Okay, so I have my squares. I have my square stock here, and I have my rod here. I got some magnets helping me hold it together. Again, I'm going to go ahead and put a magnet up here to to block the arc from the camera, and we'll give it a try. I got my CO2 argon tank open. And there goes the welder. I flipped it over and now I'm going to weld the other side. Okay, so here's my, uh, my my welds. Not too good. <laughs> I'll clean them up with the grinder. But it should hold. This is the bolt I'm going to use, and what I really want is it to fit down into this uh, groove in the top of my chisel. But I don't want it to mark it up. So I'm going to make the tip of this, I'm going to grind it so it's more cone shaped. So I'm going to hold, since it's a small part, I'll hold it to Since it was, it's a small part, I'll hold it to my strips.
this should give me a better fit and not scratch up the inside of my chisel. So there's my final jig. I used my angle grinder to get rid of that really heavy weld that I had there. It looks like it, it stuck pretty good. The other side, not so bad. The only thing left to do now is to bend this slightly so that it matches the drawing. And it looks like I only need to bend it back just a little bit. And that should just about do it. So let me attach it to my uh, chisel and we'll try it out on the grinder. I'm ready to try out my jig and this is my uh, tool holder. It's made of, made of uh, three quarter inch square steel with a piece of angle iron which is actually a piece of bed frame and then I have a little uh, piece here that I can move back and forth okay. and then a little clamp to hold it in place now the book says this should be four inches down so this hits about the bottom of the, of the wheel on an eight inch wheel that's four inches down and this should be back about seven inches. Now what's really important not so much those exact measurements but whether this angle meets the wheel at the proper angle. So if I have a chisel that's been sharpened correctly and I position it here it should meet the wheel at the same angle. So I'm gonna adjust mine forward a little bit And I should not see any light between the tool and the surface of the stone. To verify that, or to help me, I'm going to go ahead and blacken the tip so I can see where the stone is hitting. I'm using a, a new grinder. I haven't used this before. This is one of those uh, slow grinders that spins at 1725, half horsepower. And we'll give it a try. So, I'm going to start on the side. see that on the tip it mattered pretty good. On this wing it met pretty good. But this uh, right wing needs to be ground a little bit further. Again the left wing is good. The right wing it's only a little bit more. And I think I'm going to leave it right there. This little part here doesn't matter. I'm just grinding my tool away if I spend any more time on that. Okay. See how you can see it better here. You can see a little black mark. I'm not gonna try to chew that up. The tip looks good. The other side looks good. So that worked pretty good. Well, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you click on the like, and uh, don't forget to subscribe.